Alright guys, so recently I've made some HUT videos regarding starting your team, the first 5 to 7 cards to go after, then I did a video on the next 13 that I think that you should target just to make an actual base lineup. Now today's video I'm going to show you what you should do to build a small coin base and some other tips and whatnot to build up that coin stack so you can actually start getting some decent cards. So I'm no sleeves 12 and this is basic HUT market tips. Now, obviously, getting a team like mine is going to require some money, basically, unless you're one of the top players in the game. So if you want to spend money, I've got some easy tips on what to do with that as well. But let's pretend like you don't want to spend a dime, and I don't blame you at all. So here are the few tips that you want to do, and I, I want to preface this by saying it's not easy. Everything in this game is a grind. Whether you want to get better at the game, you need to grind it. Uh, you want to get a top 100 finish, you got to grind it. And like, unless you're extremely good at the game, then you're going to have, you know, it's a battle to get a better team and whatnot, but that's part of the fun. So today I want to show you the small things that you're going to do that will eventually build up a coin stack now again everyone asks for it's like a diet pill there isn't just some magic diet pill when making a coin stack for hut unless you're a shark and you know exactly when things are going to drop or the best times to actually um, buy collectibles and other cards and whatnot when new events come you're really not going to make any money consistently uh, especially if you only have you know a couple hours a day to play maybe even less so i'm going to show you what to do um if you don't have a lot of time and what you should spend your your time on if you do get that free couple hours um, to sit in the marketplace and actually make some coins. So let's jump in with uh, the first tip I want to show you guys. So we're going to start with gold commons. All right, guys, so what you want to do, this can work with gold rares, gold commons, bronze rares, silvers I would stay away from. There's so many silver cards on the market, you're really not going to make any money. So let's start with gold commons, for example. So what I do here is I go and find the cheapest buy now price. So right now, the current market is sitting at 1,700 coins, meaning that you need to buy something that's less than 1,615 because there is a 5% market increase or market share that they hold when you sell, so the tax that you have to pay on it. So if you buy a card for 1,700 and you want to flip it for 1,700, let's say you're actually going to lose coins. You're going to lose 85 coins because that's 5% of 1,700. So what you need to do is find out what the market is currently for the cheapest buy now. And then what you need to do is go and find slightly less. So you want to be making like 100 to 200 coins on each one. So the best way to do it is to go find the expiring one. So if you sit there, let's say you do it late at night. So the people that, you know, are able to play in the morning, like 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., those kinds of things, you have the biggest advantage because there's less players on. And obviously, the later you go, the less, you know, there's just less competition in these in these. Uh, in these uh, cards and, and, and auctions. So what you want to do is find ones that are cheap. So see how I'm placing bids and the expiring ones? Uh, this is a bad example because unfortunately, you know, there isn't a lot expiring as this video is I'm doing it. So a few minutes away. But what you want to do is sit there and just bid on them and set a hard price that you want to go to. So for example, let's say I sit there and I'm willing to go up to 1400 okay? So I buy it for 1400 I list it for 17 because that's the buy now, right? <clears throat> Then what you do is you minus 85 because that's 5%. So you've made 1615 on that card. You bought it for 1400. You've now made 215 coins. That sounds like a small amount, but that is the best and most effective way because you're going to get some card steals where you win the auction for like a thousand. Okay, then you've made 400. If you can do this repeatedly for a few hours, even just on the weekend, you don't have to do it every day, but obviously the more coins you have, if this is if if coins are what is most important to you, there's a few ways to do it. You can make a solid like 15, 25, you know, 15 to 20k an hour by doing this method, okay? Because you'll find somewhere, you know, no one's paying attention and you'll get a you'll get a gold common or even a gold rare for 500 less than the buy now. It works with bronzes as well. Bronzes are just much cheaper, okay? So, for example, in this video, what I do here is I find one that's being sold for 300, I buy it, list it for 400, and then it sells and I've made a little bit. I've made like 80, or sorry, I've made like 70 coins, okay? But those are the ways that you grind the market um, without the, you know, the, the shark mentality where you find the uh, collectibles about to go on sale or um, or things like that. It's 5 p.m. on a Friday when the new stuff drops, that's when you need to pay attention and you're right on the market. That's how those guys, when 5 p.m. hits, you go and look at the new sets and it requires like a base Brock Besser. The people that go and buy all the base Brock Bessers for like 2,500 and they're not paying attention, 
you get all those Brock Besters, now they sell for 50k. That's how you make the tons of money. But if you're looking to just grind consistently throughout the day, this is how you do it. And again, it's a long grind, but this is how you work the market. So say you don't want to do that because, well, I understand you want to actually play the game. If you're not a good player, okay, and you accept that you're not a very good player, let's say you're Division 5 and up, okay, you're, you're back in, the, in those divisions, every week you should be qualifying for Hut Champs. Okay, guys, the top 1,500 in the qualifiers will get a qualifier card, okay? It's not very difficult to qualify for Hut Champs, okay? You need to be doing it every day, and if you can't, then what you need to be doing is trying to get better so that you can at least qualify every weekend for Hut Champs, and here's why. Once you qualify for Hut Champs and you play your five games, say you go 0-5, you're done, whatever, you you know, you A, you'll get better because you're playing better players, but B, once you're done, you've made 5K in those five games at least. You've made a gold plus pack. You need to be maximizing the amount of ways to get packs here if you don't want to buy them whether that be comp seasons or hut champs. The fact that you can go into hut champs, qualify for hut champs throughout the week with three games, all you have to do is really win three in a row if you can do that. And, you know, the, the competition isn't all that great. You can win that, and then you play your five hut games, the lowest ranking no matter what, anything after 500, you get a gold plus pack. So, like, that's just stupid to not do it every week because the gold plus pack will actually make you a couple thousand coins no matter what. And the reason for it is because gold com or gold rares go for 2,500, gold commons go for about 15 to 17, and you're going to make some decent coins that way. Look right here, 250 to 500. Say you have a decent one, I get three gold plus packs. That's nuts. Like, those are just free packs and free money. Whether you're going to pull anything, that's fine. You're at least going to make, you know, 10 to 15K sometimes just based on the pulls that you get, and they're nothing special. Next, what you want to do is be doing the offline challenges, guys. I know not a lot of people want to hear this, but I did it when the game first came out, so it had a little bit more, you know, benefits to me because I was able to get a ton of coins early on. If you just get the game, you obviously don't really have much of a desire to do this, but it's very easy. Spend a weekend, you know, if you're going to play the game, and you're, again, you're not very good, you're trying to build your team up, and you don't want to get slaughtered with all the legend teams and whatnot, you can build a pretty decent team by just doing the offline hut hut competitions and hut challenges because they're, they're very easy, and you're going to get like 100,000 coins if you do most of them. Um, you don't have to do all of them. And you're also going to work towards the other legends because the legends are where you really make a half-decent team, whether it be Sakic, Madano, um, McKinnis, all those guys, uh, those are the ones you really want to work for, and doing offline hut challenges is the best way to do them. Lastly, what I want to talk about is if you decide that you do want to spend money on building a team, whatever, you you know, this is a hobby game, ultimate, hockey ultimate team, I can understand if you don't want to, but if you do because you're going to play this game quite a bit, spending money isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world for it. So if you do, listen to me closely, I have opened up way too many packs. Say you spend $100, okay? Let's make it 50 Okay, you have $50 in hut points. Only open up gold plus packs, guys. The reason for it, because even if you don't pull a legend or whatever the gimmicky pack that's out right now, let's say the all-star one, okay, that's going to rip through your coins like nothing because you're, they cost 2,000 points to open. The gold pluses cost 700 points to open. And you're going to make a couple thousand coins in each one no matter what. And they also seem to have the greatest chance to pull something good. I just did one on stream. I pulled three All-Star 90 overall cards in about, you know, like six packs. It was nuts. And it, throughout the whole year, Gold Plus packs have been the way to go. And it's what I'd recommend. Now, I also need to mention, if you're not going to spend money on packs, do not spend coins on packs, guys. The investment to return is so chancy that you are going to almost... 100% lose money on uh, on what you do if you spend the 35k um, coins to actually buy the gold plus packs. Please do not do that. Save it to buy individual players. And I'm going to show you in the next video what players you should buy after you have your initial team. And uh, that should help you out a little bit. But So guys, I hope this video helps you out a little bit. If you are new to HUT or you don't really know what to do as far as the HUT market goes, um, just some things that I picked up over over you know the last six months of playing the game pretty regularly. Um, if you have anything else that you want to add, just let me know in the comment section below. And if you do like the content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do appreciate it. If you want to catch me live on Twitch Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., I don't miss really. So you can catch me on Twitch there. So guys, thank you for watching. I'm No Sleeves 12. You guys have a great day.